Maurice White, the esteemed founder and visionary leader of the funk pioneers Earth, Wind, and Fire, was not only a musical genius, but also a radical optimist. Throughout his illustrious career, he dedicated himself to creating a universal soundtrack that resonated with the ideals of love, exuberance, and spiritual well-being. Songs such as September, Shining Star, and Let's Groove stand as testament to his groundbreaking and landscape-altering success in the music industry. However, like many public figures, White's life was marked by imperfections and controversies. One such aspect involved his personal relationships, where he faced scrutiny for alleged indiscretions. Maurice White's commitment to Marilyn White, who eventually became his wife and the mother of his three children, a daughter and two sons, was overshadowed by rumors of a prior romantic involvement with the soulful Angie Stone. The two artists initially met during a collaborative project, and their shared passion for music ignited a deep connection that translated into unforgettable performances. While their artistic synergy became a hallmark of their relationship, behind the scenes, issues were brewing. In the late 1990s, reports and rumors began circulating about an affair between Maurice White and Angie Stone, casting a shadow over his commitment to Marilyn. Despite his public image as a devoted family man, tabloids seized upon the alleged romantic entanglements, including whispers of multiple affairs with other women. These revelations sent shockwaves through the industry, leaving fans astonished by the contrast between Maurice White's public persona and the private turmoil he may have been experiencing. Furthermore, the latter years of Maurice White's life were entangled in a legal controversy. Allegations surfaced that he was being sued for purportedly withholding substantial sums of money from the late Charles Stepney, the producer behind some of Earth, Wind, and Fire's most significant hits. A peculiar twist to this legal saga is that Charles Stepney passed away 36 years prior to the lawsuit being filed. At the heart of the dispute are the contributions of Charles Stepney, who played a pivotal role in shaping the musical landscape of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Responsible for producing hits such as Shining Star, Mighty Mighty, Devotion, and Sing a Song. From 1974 until his untimely death in 1976, Stepney's creative imprint left an indelible mark on the band's iconic sound. However, a recent lawsuit, as reported by TMZ, claims that Stepney's children discovered that their father never received any royalty compensation for his producer work on these acclaimed Earth, Wind, and Fire hits, even during his lifetime. The legal action targets Maurice White and Sony Music Holdings, Inc., seeking reparation in the form of a substantial financial settlement. The Stepney family contends that they are entitled to retroactive royalty payments dating back to 1974, encompassing the entire period of Charles Stepney's contributions to Earth, Wind, and Fire's musical legacy. As we delve into the intricate tapestry of Maurice White's life and career, we encounter the duality of a musical genius whose artistic brilliance coexisted with the challenges and controversies that often accompany a life in the public eye. Maurice White, born on December 19, 1941, in Memphis, Tennessee, had his early upbringing in the Foot Homes projects under the care of his grandmother. During his formative years at Booker T. Washington High School, he forged a friendship with fellow Memphis luminary, Booker T. Jones. This camaraderie led to the inception of what might have been the first musical endeavor for both young talents. Transitioning to his teenage years, White relocated to Chicago, where his mother and stepfather resided, and enrolled at the prestigious Chicago Conservatory of Music. In the mid-1960s, he found himself at the epicenter of the music industry, working as a session drummer for the iconic Chess Records. His rhythmic prowess graced recordings for acclaimed artists such as Etta James, Muddy Waters, and The Impressions. It was during his tenure at Chess Records that Maurice White's path intersected with jazz pianist Ramsey Lewis. This fortuitous encounter led to White joining Lewis's trio as a drummer, his contributions were pivotal, 
as he participated in the recording of nine celebrated albums for the Ramsey Lewis Trio. Notably, their collaboration yielded a Grammy Award for the track Hold It Right There. Beyond musical accomplishments, the experience with Lewis profoundly influenced White's broader musical vision. He acknowledged Lewis's impact on aspects beyond the music itself, citing insights into performance and staging as invaluable lessons. During his tenure with the Ramsey Lewis Trio, Maurice White's introduction to the kalimba, an African thumb piano, marked a transformative moment. This seemingly modest instrument would go on to play a central role in the sonic tapestry of future earth, wind, and fire compositions. Reflecting on this period, White acknowledged Ramsey Lewis's instrumental role in expanding his musical horizons and imparting insights that extended beyond the realm of musical notes. Undeterred by previous challenges, Maurice White, alongside his brother Verdeen, orchestrated the reformation of earth, wind, and fire in 1972, introducing a fresh roster of talented musicians to the ensemble. Among the notable additions was vocalist Philip Bailey, whose distinctive voice would go on to become a defining element of the band's sound. The subsequent year saw the release of the album Head to the Sky, a pivotal moment for earth, wind, and fire, yielding their first two major hit singles, namely Evil and Keep Your Head to the Sky. While the collective synergy of the group's members played a crucial role in earth, wind, and fire's success, it was evident that Maurice White assumed a leadership role both musically and within the band. His vision and guidance steered the musical ship, laying the foundation for the group's unparalleled impact on the music industry. Maurice White's commitment to a lifestyle of health and optimism transcended his personal sphere, leaving an indelible mark on earth, wind, and fire's musical identity. According to NPR's Jason King, the band's music served a profound social purpose, acting as a shield against a world that constantly threatened to desensitize and harden hearts. White's ingenious concept in forming Earth, Wind, and Fire was to propel forward with a form of ethical black music capable of uplifting spirits during crucial moments. The band's repertoire, with Maurice White at the helm, became a beacon, encouraging listeners to maintain a positive outlook and keep their heads held high. Beyond the sonic realm, Maurice White's deep interests in astrology and black positivity left an enduring imprint on earth, wind, and fire's iconic visual imagery. The band's aesthetic was heavily influenced by ancient Egyptian symbols such as the Ankh and the Eye of Horus contributing to the creation of a distinctive and culturally resonant visual identity. In retrospect, Maurice White's multifaceted contributions encompassed not only musical innovation, but also a profound understanding of the social impact of music. Earth, wind, and fire, under his guidance, emerged not just as a musical force, but as a cultural phenomenon that inspired positivity, resilience, and a celebration of cultural heritage. In a 2013 interview with The Telegraph, Verdine White, the bassist for Earth, Wind, and Fire, reflected on the band's journey under the guidance of their formidable leader, Maurice White. Describing White as a strong and influential figure, Verdine emphasized the significant impact Maurice had on the band members, particularly considering their youth when they commenced their musical odyssey. At the inception of Earth, Wind, and Fire, with Maurice at 31 and the other members at 21, the band leader sought to establish a distinct moral code for musicians and their lifestyles. This ethos led the group to embrace values such as a focus on healthy food, meditation, vitamin supplementation, and an avid pursuit of philosophical knowledge, a testament to their commitment to being perpetual students of life. In 1975, Earth, Wind, and Fire achieved a breakthrough with the release of their seminal album, That's the Way of the World. The album boasted the chart-topping single Shining Star, propelling the group to unprecedented success. Notably, the album's acclaim positioned Earth, Wind, and Fire as the first black act 
to simultaneously top both the Billboard album and singles charts. Riding on the wave of this success, the band embarked on a global tour of arenas, captivating millions with their larger-than-life stage performances. The live shows became synonymous with earth, wind, and fire's influence and impact during that era. Beyond their expert musicianship and vibrant African-inspired stage costumes, the band incorporated magical and visually dazzling elements into their performances. This multidimensional approach elevated their concerts to extraordinary spectacles, establishing earth, wind, and fire as one of the most sought-after and influential live acts of their time. Under Maurice White's visionary leadership, the band not only reshaped the musical landscape, but also redefined the concert experience. The fusion of captivating visuals, magical elements, and stellar musicianship underscored earth, wind, and fire's commitment to delivering an immersive and unforgettable journey for their audience, further solidifying their status as pioneers in both music and live entertainment. The multi-platinum masterpiece Gratitude achieved significant acclaim, securing the number one pop album position for an impressive three weeks in late 1975. This influential album featured standout tracks such as the gold-certified and chart-topping R&B hit Sing a Song, the soulful ballad Can't Hide Love, reaching number 11 on the R&B charts, and radio favorites like Celebrate, Gratitude, and a captivating live rendition of Reasons. Maurice White's astute musical direction, coupled with the band's stellar performances, contributed to the enduring success of Gratitude. In 1976, Maurice White's creative vision took a spiritual turn with the production of the multi-platinum album Spirit. This transformative release not only held the number two spot on the pop charts for two weeks in the fall of 1976, but also featured the gold-certified and number one R&B single Getaway alongside the popular track Saturday Night. Spirit is often regarded as one of Earth, Wind, and Fire's most exceptional albums, a sentiment amplified by the recognition that it marked the final collaboration with Charles Stepney. Sadly, Charles Stepney, a former chess arranger, producer, session musician, multi-instrumentalist songwriter, and Maurice White's key collaborator on Earth, Wind, and Fire projects, passed away on May 17, 1976, in Chicago, I.L., at the age of 45. Continuing their trajectory of musical brilliance, the multi-platinum album All in All reached its pinnacle at number three on the pop charts in late 1977. This critically acclaimed album garnered three Grammy Awards and featured arrangements by Chicago soul luminary Tom Tom Washington and Yumir Deodato. The standout singles from the album were the chart-topping R&B hit Serpentine Fire, holding the number one position for an impressive seven weeks, and the mesmerizing fantasy. Notably, the legendary Fenix horns, consisting of Don Myrick on saxophone, Louis Satterfield on trombone, Ramley Michael Davis, and Michael Harris on trumpets, became an integral and defining component of the earth, wind, and fire sound, further solidifying the band's musical legacy. During this period, Maurice White demonstrated his versatility and influence by producing works for several notable artists. His production endeavors included collaborations with The Emotions, resulting in the release of their albums Flowers, 1976, and Rejoice, 1977. The latter, featuring the iconic number one R&B pop hit Best of My Love, became a monumental success. Additionally, Maurice worked with Denise Williams on her 1976 album, This Is Nisi, which featured the top 10 R&B hit, Free. In the late 70s, Maurice White expanded his musical footprint by venturing into the realm of entrepreneurship. In collaboration with Columbia Records, he founded the record label ARC, further establishing himself as a visionary in the music industry. The multi-platinum compilation, The Best of Earth, Wind and Fire, Vol and I, became a significant milestone, not only reaching number one on the R&B charts, 
but also climbing to the ninth position on the pop charts in the summer of 1978. The inclusion of their cover of the Beatles' Got To Get You Into My Life added to the album's success, and the band performed the song in the 1978 movie Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Another standout from this period was the chart-topping R&B hit September, coupled with the enchanting album track Love's Holiday from the album All in All. Earth, Wind and Fire's live performances during this era were nothing short of spectacular. Their spellbinding shows, characterized by cosmic waves of peace, love and joy, captivated sellout crowds. The band employed a captivating blend of lights, pyrotechnics, and exceptional music, occasionally incorporating magic illusions to enhance the overall experience. Maurice White, in describing their musical mission, conveyed a message of universal harmony, both musically and culturally, noting, we live in a negative society. I see our music as medicine. The multi-platinum album, I Am, released in the summer of 1979, soared to number three on the pop charts, driven by the million-selling single Boogie Wonderland, featuring The Emotions. Another standout track, the gold-certified ballad After the Love Has Gone, penned by David Foster, Jay Graydon, and Bill Champlin, achieved significant success, holding the number two position on both the R&B and pop charts. The subsequent release, Faces, peaked at number 10 on the pop charts in late 1980, propelled by hit singles such as Let Me Talk, You, and And Love Goes On. The funk-infused, million-selling single Let's Groove, co-written by the emotions Wanda Vaughn and her husband Wayne Vaughn, marked a resurgence in Earth, Wind & Fire's career. This track, reaching number one on the R&B charts for eight weeks and number three on the pop charts, propelled their Ray's album to platinum status, securing the fifth position on the pop charts in late 1981. However, their subsequent release, Power Light, achieved gold status and reached number 12 on the pop charts in spring 1983, featuring the top 10 R&B single and Grammy-nominated Fall in Love With Me. The 1983 album Electric Universe marked a departure from their string of gold, platinum, and multi-platinum albums, peaking at number 40 on the pop charts. In 1983, recognizing the need for a hiatus, Maurice White made a strategic decision for both himself and the band. Signing a solo deal with Columbia, he unveiled a soulful rendition of Benny King's 1961 classic, Stand By Me, which achieved notable success, reaching the sixth position on the R&B charts. This solo endeavor, the album Maurice White, released in the fall of 1985, not only featured the hit single but also showcased the tropical-infused Switch On Your Radio and the ethereal ballad I Need You, a radio-aired album track. Simultaneously, Maurice utilized this break to establish his own company, Kalimba Productions. Over the subsequent years, Kalimba Productions played a pivotal role in producing albums for esteemed artists such as The Emotions, Ramsey Lewis, Denise Williams, Valerie Carter, Barbara Streisand, Neil Diamond, L. DeBarge, and Jennifer Holliday, demonstrating White's versatility and influence in the music industry. Reuniting with Earth, Wind & Fire in 1987, the band released the album Touch the World, marked by the chart-topping R&B single System of Survival. A corresponding nine-month world tour followed, reaffirming the band's enduring global appeal. The momentum continued with the 1988 release of The Best of Earth, Wind & Fire Vol. 2. In 1990, Earth, Wind & Fire presented the album Heritage, followed by The Eternal Dance in 1992. A comprehensive 55-track boxed set retrospective chronicling the band's illustrious history. Despite initial perceptions that such a project signaled the end of the band's journey, Earth, Wind and Fire defied expectations and kept recording. The 1993 release of Millennium featured the Grammy-nominated track Sunday Morning and Spend the Night, showcasing the band's enduring creativity. 
Throughout the subsequent years, Earth, Wind & Fire continued their musical journey with releases like Avatar and Greatest Hits Live in 1996, In the Name of Love in 1997, The Promise in 2003, and Illumination in 2005, which included the Grammy-nominated Show Me the Way. In 2000, the 70s edition of Earth, Wind & Fire reunited for a one-night-only performance in celebration of their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Despite Maurice White no longer being part of the touring ensemble, he remained the heartbeat and creative force behind the scenes, contributing as a composer and producer. Maurice White's decision to concentrate on the next phase of his career did not diminish his dedication to music. He continued to write, produce, and develop new talent, pouring his considerable talents into diverse projects. In expressing his passion for music, Maurice emphasized its universal power to communicate across backgrounds and cultures. Looking ahead, he expressed a renewed energy, anticipating the creation of music that would stimulate and encourage people to be their very best in the next chapter of his illustrious career. In 2006, Maurice White engaged in a noteworthy collaboration with the multi-talented Maurice Hines, a dancer, actor, choreographer, director, and singer. Their joint endeavor materialized as the Broadway dance musical titled Hot Feet, a contemporary urban play that seamlessly blended Hines's choreography and direction with Maurice White's iconic Earth, Wind & Fire hits. The production showcased a stellar lineup of classics including Shining Star, September, Boogie Wonderland, That's the Way of the World, Getaway, Serpentine Fire, Fantasy, System of Survival, Mighty Mighty, In the Stone, and After the Love Has Gone. Additionally, original compositions crafted for the show, such as Dearest Heart, Hot Feet, You Don't Know, Kaylee, and When I Dance, added a unique and dynamic dimension to the theatrical experience. In 2007, an inspired project titled Interpretations, Celebrating, The Music of Earth, Wind and Fire, Emerged, offering fresh renditions of 10 of the band's most memorable pieces by contemporary artists. This auspicious release marked the inaugural project for Concord's revitalized Stax label, featuring interpretations by artists such as Angie Stone, Kirk Franklin, Chaka Khan, Ladisi, Dwell, Meshel Nindigeo Cello, Lala Hathaway, Music Soul Child, and Mint Condition, paying homage to Earth, Wind, and Fire's enduring influence. Recognition continued to pour in for Maurice White and Earth, Wind, and Fire as they were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2010, an accolade that celebrated their enduring impact on the music industry. In 2013, Maurice embarked on a new chapter by relaunching his Kalimba music label, emphasizing a focus on partnering with innovative artists within the contemporary jazz market. The label's current roster includes accomplished musicians such as keyboardist Greg Manning, guitarist Adam Hawley, and saxophonist Paula Atherton, showcasing Maurice White's commitment to nurturing and promoting talent across diverse musical genres. The year 2016 marked a pinnacle moment for Earth, Wind & Fire as they received the prestigious Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, a testament to their enduring legacy and profound impact on the world of music. Maurice White's multifaceted contributions, spanning production, collaboration, entrepreneurship and mentorship, solidified his enduring influence and legacy within the realms of music and culture. On the morning of February 4, 2016, Maurice White passed away peacefully in his sleep at the age of 74, at his residence in Los Angeles, succumbing to the effects of Parkinson's disease. His brother, Verdine White, expressing deep sorrow, conveyed the news and described Maurice as not just a brother, but a hero and best friend. In the wake of this loss, the family requested privacy as they navigated through what they anticipated to be a challenging and transformative period. The passing of Maurice White was acknowledged by the music community, with artists such as Stockley Williams, Richard Marks, Raphael Sayadik, Larry Blackman, 
and Nate Dogg, expressing their admiration and citing him as a significant influence. Maurice White's impact on the music industry is indelible, and his legacy stands as a testament to his contributions as a musician and visionary. While the world mourned the loss of a great artist and legend, his enduring influence continues to resonate, ensuring that Maurice White's legacy will be remembered and celebrated for generations to come.